Hey guys, welcome to another All Base Creations Effects Tutorials, Demos, and Review. Today we're going to be going through this small pedal board I just finished setting up about a week ago. Um, yeah, like that. You know, it's pretty much um, my live setup. You know, only the basic stuff I need for my live stuff. I don't. I have my bigger pedal board, but I don't want to carry that everywhere. Um, you know, pedals are very expensive and some of those pedals I can't really replace, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and leave them home. And don't worry about it. But um, a certain amount of my pedals I need. So what I have on this pedal board here, as well as I take my B6 for when I have um, bigger uh, events that need like um, in-ear monitoring, things like that, so I can have my IR set up. So I'm pretty much going to go through that whole setup now and just explain it and play through it a little bit. This is actually... My bass dry. So that's the bass dry. Um, Let's just go ahead and explain some things right off the back. Um, what we're looking at here is um, first thing on the pedals is this this gold um, three-way switcher there. Um, three-way effects loop switcher. Pretty much each one of these is a different effects loop. As well as when they all bypass, I can send the signal straight out. And I'm going to start there first. We'll be going direct with none of the effects loops engaged. It comes out of this pedal, goes into the Eden. Then goes into the Aguilar, then the Ampeg, um, preamp, and then the Spectra Comp. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the Spectra Comp on now. But all of these um, preamps, I use like amp heads. So what do I mean by that? Meaning um, when I'm running my amps, I'm actually, only when I'm running them into the amps preamp is the um, Ampeg VA210. Rest of my stuff I'm running into the um, amp in power amp in or the return, um, and that allows me to bypass the preamp and allows me to have three different types of preamp for one amp setup. So like the Eden and, and is a completely different sound than the Ampeg and the Aguilar and all them all them just different different beasts. Um, but they're all very versatile. So. Let's go ahead and start with the Eden. ton of clarity with that you know and these are just my my basic gig settings you know the Aguilar now we got the Ampeg So you get very nice sound out of all of them. And all, all, and that's literally just um, the preamps and the Spectra Comp, which is a multi-band compressor, compressor by TC Electronic. A little small pedal at the top, um, all the way to the left. And that is an amazing little pedal within itself. Pretty much you can change all your presets from your phone, just beam them straight into there. Or you could use a USB and get really detailed and start changing stuff. Um, the various parameters. I mean, like every single parameter of a compressor, you can literally change on that little thing. It's crazy. 
but it's only one knob and you can set that one knob to control multiple parameters and I just got it set to the basic one because I always liked the way it sounded on my BH500 head so I just set it basically to the out the box you know spectral comp setting and all right so now let's back up a bit so now we'll come back to this first loop here um this first loop is um the boss oc5 uh, mxr poly blue octave and the uh, zoom ms60b and all of these are amazing pedals we're going to go through each one play around with them a bit and these um the thing i, I love about these zoom pedals these zoom i stomp pedals i have two of them on here as you can see ms50g ms60b um they they add a ton of space to your pedal boy what do i mean by that by having two of those on there i now have 10 extra slots for effects that i don't have to have and on my pedal board only taking up two slots on my pedal board one two but i get up to 10 effects with both of those on at once you know if i wanted to um but we're going to start with the boss oc5 So what I'm going to do, I'm going to back up just for a second. Um, let's just go with the Aguilar for now. Aguilar preamp. Before we even get to the, the rest of that, I need to turn on these IRs. So on my Zoom B6, I have my iPad running as well. My iPad just controlling the Zoom B6. So on here, um, I have... Volume pedal, bass chorus, ascend, and that send splits um, the signal into out to my amp before the IR. Then um, it also has a dry signal, so then the dry signal goes to the IR, and then a limiter and a room um, reverb, pretty much very light. So I'm gonna turn that on real quick. The IR is the limiter and the a slight reverb just so I can have a little bit more of a amp sound in my ears. So that's one of my favorite IRs on the Zoom B6. I have um, about four of them on there that I really like and I use on the gig. And I just keep them all in one bank and I just switch back and forth and don't have to worry about, you know, flipping through anything. It makes it very easy. Um, and the IRs or, or cabinets and amps change everything. This, <coughs> excuse me, this same IR, if I was to turn on the Eden, totally different sound Thank you. 
So, totally different sounds, just by changing the preamp, keeping the IR cabinet the same, and I can do that with the other four as well, and that gives me a ton of different options. I haven't even touched EQs. I'm, I'm setting and forgetting EQs on my, on my pedal board because I don't want to have to fool with this stuff when I'm on stage. I'm not trying to turn no knob for real when I'm on stage. I'm trying to click and go. I don't got time for it, and neither do you. So whenever you're doing your setup, make sure you can click and go um, as much as possible. You don't want to be fooling, fiddling around while you're on stage. That's annoying, and it's and it typically will make you miss a cue or or make you mess up in some way, shape, or form. And that's not how you keep your job by messing up all the time. This is music, so precision is important. Um, so, you know, I have all my stuff pretty much set at the beginning of the gig. You know, when you move it and you put it in the pedal board and stuff, little, little knobs going to change. You just look over everything for the gig, make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. Then you could just click, 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 set things up. So now, uh, I like the way that amp, uh, I kind of like the way the amp peg sound with it, which I think. That's, that's this is we're back to the loop one the first loop green loop whatever you want to call it um like i said it's these three pedals that was the oc5 setting i usually use for chordal things So now we got the poly blue octave. And one tip with these octavers, you don't want to overdo it with your bass. If you have an active bass, you might want to cut the bass, especially for like the mono, um, monophonic octavers. Definitely cut your bass, boost your mids. So they actually track, you know, it tracks really well. Even in mono, you know, it tracks well. It's going to give you a very different sound than the OC5. OC5, if I was going to use it in bass for, you know, more bass stuff, it would be set to, you know, um, dry all the way down, maybe a little octave up, one octave up, and mostly one octave down.
you start adding in, we'll go back to the poly blue. You know, we'll start um, adding in some different stuff like distortion, um, some different things I got on uh, MS60B. And I have a ton of presets on here. I already mapped out for different synth stuff, but I'm not going to go through all that stuff right now. I'm just going to go on my clean setting. I have four different effects set that are not on. You know, I can just turn on, but they're all preset to what I would use them for. So let's put on some Bit Crusher. So you take that and you add on maybe like um, some envelope filter. You got a couple different options. I'll turn on this phase, this warp phaser on there first. without the octave. It's a whole different, it still sounds very synthy. You can still tell it's a bass. But you can take that warp fade off and just add on the M filter, which is like a Moog style filter on there, which just sounds very close. Close enough, you know, better than spending that almost $800 for a filter. <laughs> So, as you can see, I'm, I'm going back and forth between the preamps here. Just trying to give you guys a, a sense of how much they change, you know, just the pure characteristics of any sound, you know. It's a, it's a different option for every single sound. Like, even if I wanted to kick on some of the um, SGT circuit on the Ampeg... Mm-hmm. 
So, and that's just the MS60B by itself. You know, if you start kicking on the octave, you start getting real funk. I can even kick on a little bass chorus on the B6. I can even kick on things like, you know, the Zoom B6 also has DI's uh, emulations, um, two tube and two solid state. So I'm going to hit on this. I like to use this tube one for simp stuff. So it just it just starts to get real warm in there, you know what I'm saying? It gets and then you um I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead um just a little bit because I wanna turn on something real quick. Um my MS sixty um fifty MS fifty G um is on this third loop so the first loop is these three pedals um oc5 poly blue and ms60b second loop the red loop so the red loop would be um the bass balls and the mxr filter and then third loop is the key nine and the ms50g okay so now those are explained what i want to do is just i have a synth um clean synth setting that I have on my MS50G, um, and that allows me to get my nice vibrato. It's a effect on there called Mojo Roller, and it has a pre-delay. It's a vibrato, but it has a pre-delay, very smooth vibrato. You got to set the, the um, whatever, the bias right, I think it is. Uh, I forgot what they call it on there, but you pretty much have to um, set that pre-delay so it doesn't kick in right away. So... You could definitely hear it, like, just, it's very subtle. As you care, it's not like a super deep vibrato. It just makes the sound sing just a little bit extra. That's all you're trying to do. You ain't really trying to. You ain't really trying to kill them with the vibrato. Just a little bit, a little bit extra touch on there. So, kick off this DI. All right. So now let's jump a little back. Let's go to the second loop. That's enough of the first loop, pretty much. It's these three pedals again. Um, I have more settings on the MS60B. You know what? I got one more I want to show y'all. Meow, 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 meow,
So, as you can see, um, very simplistic to work. We're going to take out that first loop. We're going to go to the second loop. Kick on some bass balls. We got the um, MXR as well. So you, as you can see, even without adding anything, you know, say I went back to the first, um, dang it, I went to the first loop. Sorry about that, guys. Go back to this first loop, and we're going to add that um, bit crusher. Baseball.
So, you know, that's pretty much the filters. You know, I'm only using two on in that um, effects loop, but I have several, um, well, not several. I use two other filters that are in the MS60B, um, and I use another two filters that are in the MS50G as well that sound really good. The res um, resonance filter on the zoom pedals is crazy. I love them. On the Zoom B6, they have it as one of the effects you can control as a with your foot, with your um. What's this thing called? Y'all know the foot pedal thing, <laughs> the foot switch. You know you can um control it with that, and it allows you to pretty much um. You know, change sweep through the filters or um. With that one, but if you use one of the sequence filters, I believe you can control the time like how fast the sequence is repeating or the, the tempo of the sequence. So, you know, you got a lot of different options when you just integrate some of the digital stuff with the analog stuff. Preamps, you want it to be analog. Um, effects like modulate, uh, like modulations and things like that can definitely be digital. It does not need to be analog. I mean, you can if you want to. I mean, it's just really, it gets really expensive buying pedals. So, um, one of the things I do when I buy pedals, I look at, is it a totally different sound and is it a sound that I'm going to use on the regular? Not every day, not every gig, but on the regular. Am I going to use that sound on the regular? So, you know, take that into consideration. Into consideration. You don't want to be buying pedals and, you know, wasting money. So, we're going to go to this last loop. Kick on some key nine. I have a few settings on here for bass as well. Um, I have different settings when I'm using it for pads and things like that, but I have specific settings um, or type of sounds I use for it for, for actual bass stuff. Sorry, I still had the first loop on. actually the vibe setting on there my favorite for bass uh, well let's before we go to my favorite we'll go to this other one I like the steel drum one as well that setting um you know you can play around with different preamps or different eq settings you can add um some delay and reverb here with something like the ms 50g but i'm just kind of going through the sounds of this pedal real quick because this is like its own 
sound within itself. This is my favorite, the mallets. Absolute favorite pedals, you know, very versatile. Of course, you also have like the actual um, EP sounds on there as well. So on the MS50G, I typically just go through my presets. Um, You know, this is more my um, guitar funk setting for when I need that type of sound. Let's see. So, you know, it gives me that, you know, nice funk type setting. I have a, you know, couple um, solo settings set up as well.
So, you know, for my ambient stuff, you know, you could um, vibe and swell that in. So as you, yeah, you getting all that, all that pad there, top settings, all that different stuff. Um. <laughs> different delays, reverb stuff. Set up my Marshall. <laughs> different settings where's the other one that was that clean sim setting So as you can see, I have quite a few just presets set up um, that I could just click, 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 click through. I kind of memorized the list for the most part. Like I know I have a set number of presets on there um, that I've selected to go in a rotation. So all, as I click through them, it just goes back to the top. The top is clean, and then I got other sounds. And then, you know, I, I pretty much have it memorized. I really don't add too many presets to that situation so i don't overcomplicate things but yeah so pretty much that's that's my live setup and that's pretty much how i i go about um using my pedal board um pretty much like i said i have it so i can just bypass all these extra pedals and just have preamp and compressor and if i need my zoom b6 and i have it with me i'm running like i said straight into the um irs and the limiter and like just a touch of the room reverb you're talking about you're talking about me i got it set to about 10 percent um of the mix so 90 percent dry 10 percent wet uh, which is a lot um you know i could i could get away with i could definitely dial that back um if i was going to record then yeah but because it's in my in ears it makes it feel sound like a room so let me just give you guys a quick example of what I'm talking about. Mm, they haven't used the Eden today too much.
two preamps on at once. So as you can see, when, without that little bit of room in there of rever reverb, you know, that little 10%, you know, it makes a difference. It makes it feel like you're, like it's not just glued to your ear. It makes it feel like you don't have on in-ears as much. Um, it makes it sound like you're listening to the room versus listening to a direct bass signal, which I prefer to listen through it to an, through an amp. So these IRs and stuff, it's like I'm taking the cabinet and putting it in the room, you know, except so it, it just kind of adds to the touch of the sound. Um, and that would only be going to the in ears. Um, if I wanted to run it to the house, I could, I guess. They would just have to live with it. But um, typically, if you run it to the house, you wouldn't be running that room um, reverb. But I, I personally like it. Um, even, even when I've used live shows, it just sat better in the mix with that little 10% of the room in there, um, in my in-ears at least. So i say, you know, something you can experiment with, try it. Um, if you like it, keep it. If you don't, hey, chuck it. Um, yeah, but speaking of these IRs and stuff, So that's the Aguilar. Here's the Ampeg 115 no tweeter. So as you can see, it's got a real, you know, sounds just like an Ampeg 115 with no tweeter. Ampeg 410s with a tweeter. That's with the Ampeg. If I switch it to the Aguilar, tif totally different sound. So that's pretty much um well I got one more one more IR um Ampeg eight tens we gonna start with the Eden since we already there. Aguilar. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
And I'm actually going to go back for a second because I want to use this B15 voicing on the Ampeg with 115 setting. So as you can see, you know, it gives you a very versatile setup when you have um, multi-effects. I have three different multi-effects incorporated into this live setup, uh, which just gives me a ton of flexibility. That's automatically 16 slots, up to 16 slots I can use at once without having 16 different pedals. And not only that, but I can switch them. I can use the effects loop on the zoom, the split signals, and everything i can route um anywhere off of my board i have three preamps i could xlr out easily from any of those um or i could just if i was using an ampeg i could just run straight um um out the through which is um pretty much uh, bypassing all of the pedal it's just a straight through direct signal from your base um to do other stuff if, that, if that's what's needed but um yeah even with the irs I'm using, um, I have the the phase uh, reversed, and I have the phase inverted, and I have about, what is this? So about 80, I say about 87% of the signal is the preamp, direct from the preamp, and then there's about, you know, a negative, there's about 13% of the cab sound there. So I'm not using, excuse me, I'm not using all IR signal coming from there. I have that IR, so only 13% of that is the IR sound. The rest of that is the actual preamp sound. And when you mix the two, you get a nice sound together. So, you know, that's pretty much my, my bass pedal tips for the day, you know. Um, this is my, you know, my live setup for anything, really. It just made my, makes my world a lot easier. You know, look, this thing is only, it's only like 18, 19 inches long. And then it's only about 12, eight, it's about 12 by, I mean, 19 by 12, something like that. Small pedal board. But, you know, very versatile as you guys can see. I can do a ton of different stuff. And that's what you pretty much want. You know, everybody doesn't need all of these pedals. I do, personally. I need them for different stuff, different shows, and I'm not trying to put together a pedal board every five seconds. So um, I had to put together something that would allow me to lock it down for a little bit and then, um, you know, and still be versatile enough where I'm switching things. That's why the multi-effects are really useful because I can place effects in various places around the board without switching pedals, without physically moving the pedals. So... Um. Yeah. So basically, you know, that's everything, guys. Oh, it's running off a True Tone CS12. Um, and that's that's power in the board. So, um, that's my favorite power supply. And then the next one would be the MXR um, ISO Brick. Those two, you can't go wrong with either one of those. The M, the S uh, CS12 though is going to give you more. It's going to give you more output and more um more slots you know power slots so definitely check out those um i'm i'm not really sure this is some generic pedal board i got from the music store you know they had somebody sell it to them <coughs> excuse me sold it to me for pretty cheap so made a pedal board out of it so now um if you haven't already please subscribe like and share you know, definitely help me um, be able to do more content content like this more frequently. 
and I definitely appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Again, this has been another episode of All Base Creations, Effects Tutorials, Demos, and Review. I am the Base Negus. Make sure you follow me on all social media, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.